What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am very excited because we finally get to take a look at AMD's all new Ryzen 7 8700G. This new APU allows you to game at 1080p with a lot of the newer AAA stuff with no dedicated GPU. We're just going to be using the brand new RDNA 3i GPU they have here. And I've been doing some testing over the past few days. Yeah, this thing is putting down some amazing performance. Okay, so before we get started here, I do want to give Newegg a big shout out for sending this over for review. They're not going to be reviewing this video before it goes live, and all opinions are my own. But like I mentioned, I've been really excited about this new APU, especially for smaller form factor builds, just an APU only build, and I will have more videos coming up on the channel, so definitely keep an eye out. But this is more of a first look video. We're going to run some benchmarks, test out some games, see what kind of performance we can get out of this new APU. Diving inside of the packaging here with that Ryzen 7 8700G, AMD has included a cooler, and to my surprise, it's actually the Spire cooler. It's not a race stealth like the older 5700G came with. This is a much larger cooler, and this could definitely get you by. And I'm really glad to see that they have the Spire here. If you're familiar with the Ryzen's new 7000 series CPUs, you know pretty much none of them came with a boxed cooler, so it's really nice to see something with the 8700G. And that'll bring us to our next point, pricing on the 8700G. AMD did release a couple other variants like the 8600G and the 8500G, but this is their top of the line APU with integrated graphics. Retail price, $329. Definitely higher than the older 5700G right out of the box, but we are working with a lot more performance. On paper, this chip really does look like the 7700X with better integrated graphics. So we've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 4.2 GHz, and a boost up to 4.1. With this, we also get the new AMD Ryzen AI up to 16 tops of performance, plus the Radeon 780M iGPU. 12 compute units, this is based on RDNA 3, and in the desktop variant, the 8700G, this actually runs at 2900 MHz. And of course, since this new APU is part of AMD's AM5 platform, we do need to utilize DDR5. 5200 plus, and since we're going to be using the integrated graphics, the faster we can get that RAM, theoretically, better performance we can get out of this thing. And in the coming days, I will have more RAM testing videos with the 8700G up on the channel, but I did reach out to Patriot, and they were kind enough to send over a few of their Viper kits, so we've got the Elite 5, this is the high density 96 gigabyte version running at 6,000 megatransfers per second. They also sent over one of their Venom RGB kits. Now this will do up to 7,800 megatransfers per second, but the one that I was really excited about was their Extreme 5 kit. 48 gigabyte high density dual channel up to 8,200 megatransfers per second. And this should definitely offer a nice little bump in iGPU performance for the 8700G. But in this video, we're not going to go that high. I'm going to save it for another one. For this first look video, we're going to go with their RGB Venom kit. 32 gigs dual channel, and that's a must. Dual channel RAM with these iGPUs. You can basically cut performance in half with some games just by going with single channel RAM. So if you end up building a system like this, make sure you don't skimp out and go with dual channel RAM. So when it comes to my testing rig, we've got that Viper Venom RGB RAM running in dual channel. The motherboard is a Gigabyte X670 Aorus Elite AX. I've got a Kingston Fury M.2 SSD, just a one terabyte for this testing unit. A 650 watt cooler master power supply. And to keep the 8700G cool, I went with an ID cooling Frost Flow 280 millimeter AIO. I think these are so underrated. I've used several of them. Uh, one of my favorite little coolers. And I will leave links for everything I used here, but keep in mind, more videos are coming with smaller form factor builds and the 8700G. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it and see how this thing performs. All right, so here it is, all set up, ready to go, all the drivers installed, everything updated, and yeah, I've been doing some testing so far. It's definitely the most powerful APU on the market. As you can see, 8700G, eight cores, 16 threads. Memory. I've actually got it clocked at 7200 megahertz, and there's a big reason for this. I tested this memory at 7800 megatransfers per second in four different AM5 boards, from a B650 up to the X670s. Two of them were stable at 7800 megahertz, but the other two weren't. I had to take it down to 7200, and I figure that's a nice sweet spot here. Of course, AMD does recommend at least 5200 up to 64, 
but we can go higher. And in my next couple videos, we're actually going to be going a bit higher with this up to around 8,000 or 8,200 if I can get it there stably. Remember, with these integrated graphics, we have to use system memory as our VRAM. And theoretically, the faster it is, the better this thing will perform. And I do have some benchmarks from 52, 64, 68 up to the 7,200 megatransfers per second. You can definitely see the difference across the board. But uh, finally here, this is the big claim to fame with the 8700G, that AMD Radeon 780M. So the first thing I wanted to give you a look at was TDP on this chip. This is stock out of the box, and there is some tweaking that we can do here to get a little more out of it. So I've got core temp. It's just easy to see this package power located right here. CPU-Z, we're going to stress out the CPU side. As you can see, this jumps up to around 67 watts, but that's not taking into account the iGPU. So yeah, this is rated at 65 watts, but uh, as soon as we put a load on this new 780M, just show you right here, this jumps up to around 87 watts on average. And if we take a look at the GPU clock, you can see we're not quite at 2900 megahertz. So it can definitely use a little more if you were to stress out all eight cores, 16 threads, and that iGPU just to hit those max clocks. And what I'm going to do right now is just up the power a bit. And once I up that power, you can see we're over 100 watts right now. And our GPU is clocked at that 2900 megahertz. Now this is more of an extreme use case scenario. Games that we're playing on this device aren't going to stress out all eight cores, 16 threads, and that iGPU at the same time. But I always like to take a look at, you know, what it requires to get up to those maximum clocks. And it looks like around 112, 113 watts on the 8700G. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And keep in mind, I actually have the wattage back down to that stock around 87 watts all the way maxed out. Geekbench 6 looking phenomenal here. Single core 2,278. Multi 14,145. Coming in just a bit behind the 7700X, and I kind of suspected that we'd be on par with CPU performance over there. Now we'll take a look at some GPU benchmarks using 3 d Mark Night Raid, 31,172. Firestrike, 9,018. Two of the highest scores that I've seen out of these benchmarks with any iGPU in the market so far. And finally, we've got Time Spy, and I wanted to give you a little look at some memory scaling. So at 5200 megahertz with the same exact setup, total score with time spy 3277, with the RAM running at 6400 megatransfers, 3426, and at 6800 megatransfers, 3689. But remember, we're actually running this RAM at 7200. We scored a 3965, and I do have some more headroom with some of the boards that I have here going up to, let's say, 8200 would definitely unlock a little more. But like I mentioned, two out of the four boards that I tested so far did work with the 7200, so we're going to keep it right here. And now we need to take a look at some gaming on this thing. First thing I tested here was the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, low. And again, I wanted to compare this against some slower RAM. At 52, we got an average of 48 FPS, 64 jumped up to 56, and at 68, we average 60 FPS by the end of the benchmark, but at 7200, we averaged 65 here. So yeah, I mean, obviously, you go with faster RAM, you're going to get better performance out of this thing. But for the next games we're going to be testing here, we're just going to stick right there at 72. And here's Mortal Kombat 1. This was really impressive. Medium settings, 1080p, FSR is set to balance. We got a really steady 60 FPS across the board. And when it comes to fighting games on these Radeon iGPUs, I've always had really good luck in Justice 2, Street Fighter 6, and of course, Mortal Kombat 1 is gonna run at full speed. Next up, Forza Horizon 5, no resolution scale, so we didn't need any kind of FSR or fidelity cast. We're at medium settings, 1080p. We got an average of 116 FPS. Taking it down just a bit, or maybe adding a little bit of FSR, a little bit of resolution scale, however you want to go about it, we could run this at a constant 120 FPS, medium settings, 1080p on this iGPU. Red Dead 2 did way better than I thought it would. We're at 1080p with a low medium mix. We're at the kind of balance preset there. FSR is set to balance. We had a minimum FPS of 41. 
maximum of 89, and an average of 71 throughout the benchmark. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, 1080p, medium settings, and for scaling, I opted not to use FSR, I'm actually using the built-in IGTI scaling. This does seem to work a lot better on uh, most of these IGPUs that I've tested. As you can see, we're well over 60 here. Really awesome performance and very playable on the 8700G. I also had to throw Pal World in here. 1080p, low. I mean, we're right there on the edge. When there's lots of effects on screen, I did see it kind of dip down. Still a bit early for the game, and right now we actually don't have access to FSR in the game without any mods. You can mod it to add either XESS or FSR, but right now, you know, out of the box, it just uses DLSS. So we're not scaled at all. We're at a true 1080p low. And the final game I wanted to test for this video was Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p medium settings with FSR set to auto. This is just kind of the medium preset out of the box. Not too bad. We're averaging 55 FPS. It's a little more than I thought we'd get here, but there's way more that we can get out of this game. Now, usually when I'm testing this game, it's on a mobile APU, and these are the settings I personally use over there. 1080p low FSR set to performance. As you can see, we got a pretty nice FPS boost. Now with it set up like this, we're averaging 88 FPS, which isn't bad at all for integrated graphics, but it does come at a price. I mean, the game doesn't look as good. That's kind of the trade-off there. What's your problem? So when it comes to my first impressions of the Ryzen 7 8700G, really glad to see this come to market. Now it is a bit more expensive than I expected it to be, coming in at 329, but we do have those eight Zen 4 cores and 16 threads, and with the correct power management, this thing is kind of performing like the 7700X. So the way I see it is it would be totally worth building a system right now around the 8700G, game on the iGPU. As you saw, we got some really great 1080p performance. Then, once you save some more cash, you can add a discrete GPU. This does support PCIe 4.0, but it doesn't support PCIe 5.0, and I've seen people complaining about that, but I've gotten plenty of performance out of 4.0 cards, and with this setup here and a discrete GPU, like let's say even an RTX 3070 used on eBay, you could set up a really powerful little rig. So yeah, personally, I think AMD has knocked it out of the park, and I will have more videos on the way. Definitely want to go with some small form factor builds, but checking out how much wattage we need to throw at this to keep those clocks up, we're going to need a pretty beefy cooler. Now, I've got some ideas in mind, so keep an eye on the channel. And I know this chip all by itself with the built-in iGPU and even slower DDR5 RAM, like 5200, it's going to handle emulation like a boss. So that video is in the works right now. If you're interested in picking up an 8700G, I will leave links down below along with everything else that I used here. This Patriot RAM has worked out really well with the 8700G, so those will also be down below. But if there's anything else you want to see running on this rig or even a smaller form factor rig powered by the 8700G, let me know in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.